Welcome again to our roundtable and our continuing discussion with interesting people involved in publishing, writing, reading, design, other aspects I haven't mentioned. This is program number 22 in our exploration of the world of writing and publishing. And we're dealing particularly with things of a criminous nature. Is that a real word, criminous? Anyway, with me in the studio are my co-hosts, two fascinating and talented writers, Ellen Hart, author of the Jane Lawless series, and of course, William Kent Kruger, author of the Cork O'Connor series. And a little later, we've got a real treat for you. We'll welcome St. Paul Irish writer, Erin Hart. And now I asked whether she was really Irish. Did I ask? We'll Never ask mind. her when she We'll ask, ask her, yeah. we'll, I, I know she's married to an Irishman. I know that because Patty's a terrific Irish musician, but that's a different program. So there's been a real dust up in the publishing world about electronic books and Macmillan and Amazon. You want to talk a little bit about that? Because you've been directly affected. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, um, Amazon has been setting prices mm -hmm. for their Kindle books at $9.99. And um, at that, they're losing money. Um, the presses aren't necessarily losing money, but the, the Amazon is. It's a loss leader. But what it's done is it's given the industry the idea that $9.99 and, and the consumer the idea that $9.99 is what an e-book costs. Mm -hmm. And um, Macmillan went to talk to them a couple of weeks ago and um, said that they wanted to set their own prices for their e-books. Some might be less than $9.99, some might be more. Mm -hmm. Um, and Amazon got so hysterical, one blog said <laughs> well, that they, they pulled out their pacifier and threw it across the room. You're telling stories now. <laughs> and they delisted every Macmillan book mm -hmm. because they said Macmillan um, was a monopoly. All That's right. like now saying... wait, wait. <laughs> but it, it isn't just Macmillan because Macmillan is actually several imprints. Yes, it's all of the, I believe there was one Macmillan imprint that wasn't involved, but pretty much all the Macmillan imprints were like involved. Like Tor. I believe Tor and yeah. Forge and, yeah. and it may have been Palgrave that didn't. I, I don't, uh, mine I don't is, remember. Yeah. And your books were delisted, Second right? Second time in one year that Amazon has taken what them What was off. Amazon's rationale for listing everything at nine ninety nine? As a loss leader. They wanted to corner the industry. Okay. And the market, when, yeah. when Apple came out a few weeks ago with their new iPad, mm -hmm. it's starting to look like there's <laughs> going to be there. some, uh, <laughs> yes, there's going to be some, uh, I think that's what, what caused Macmillan to go in and say, you know, we really don't want to do this anymore. We want to set it ourselves. And, uh, and Amazon freaked. Well, part of the problem, of course, is that the publishers don't have a lot of retail experience in setting book prices. You know, publishers don't. Don't, don't do that. The booksellers <laughs> have always been, you know, we'll sell you the book to the, um, not Amazon, I keep on saying Amazon, Ingram or whoever, and Ingram will sell it to the bookseller, and the bookseller sets the price, regardless of what's on the cover. This is complicated for, and I think, I suspect that most consumers, hell, most most authors, authors don't yes. yeah. exactly no, don't, right. don't raise. So it's a real, and it's because, well, there are two reasons, as, as I see it. One, one of which is that these big publishers don't have retail experience. But the other thing is that there are so many now, there are now so many new publishers coming out that are just selling ebooks and that are doing just fine. What percentage of sales does ebooks, ebook sales account for? It's not. It's not large, but it's growing that's, exponentially. I think that's probably It grew issue. like 200% this year, or last year over this year. On your 
you, you see the e-books reflected on your royalty statements. Have you seen growth in the e-book yes, sales? Yes, yeah, absolutely. So have I. Mm -hmm. All those pennies keep, keep mounting up. Absolutely. Yeah, a thousand pennies, ten thousand pennies. You know, it's a big pile of pennies, but it's. But hmm. if I may make one more point, may. for Amazon to come in and say Macmillan was acting in a monopolistic way, <laughs> to me, <laughs> is like saying that Nabisco has a monopoly over um, Oreo cookies. You know, really, really? <laughs> it just it makes yeah, no yeah, sense. Yeah. Uh, and now Pot Amazon has backed black, away kind of mm -hmm. and now listed all the books. But I don't think that they have absolutely. Um, well, you know, ever since the e-book was first introduced, mm -hmm. there's just been a huge discussion in, uh, in, the, in our business, in our community, about what effect this is going to have. Mm -hmm. i got to tell you, I, I have never met anybody who's had a Kindle, because that's the, the one most people are familiar with now, who's been, in the end, disappointed with mm -hmm. the Kindle. And I think right. that what we have to do is come to terms with the fact that e-books are here. The electronic Absolutely. way of reading is here. And who knows, maybe it'll open up a market to, to kids who grew up on technology, and that's how they uh, relate. And well, for older adults, it's, you know, when I walk into my office and there's an avalanche because all the books I have in there fall on top of me, <laughs> you know, I, it starts to New look shelves, very uh, like a Kindle or an iPad, one of those devices starting to look yeah. pretty good to me. Well, the thing, the thing, of course, is that now people are watching, looking at movies on their yeah. Tom Toms or on their Blackberries, they're, they're, which must drive producers and directors crazy and and all of these the, the generations that are coming up what I see is a new market for people who don't necessarily aren't wedded to books the way our generation and, and older generations are so I think that that what we all as authors have to do in terms of of, of reaching out to consumers who may be interested in our books is to examine diff these different markets I don't see um, e-books as necessarily taking away from the mass market, although that may that may disappear eventually, but you don't know. Just, well, it's certainly not going to supplant paper books. Mm -mm. Not no. in our lifetime. And Any hopefully they'll than, augment, yeah. it'll come to augment each other in a very productive way. Any more than it. TV, you know, replaced movies completely, or radio, a, TV replaced radio. Yeah. I mean, they're still all around. Well, we're going to have to stay tuned because it's a real rat's nest. I mean, we could spend hours... <laughs> And we don't know as much about it as a lot of other people do. Mm -hmm. And we well, maybe we should get somebody on who really knows that's the whole e-book great e -book, idea. E -book thing. Well, uh, that, that's just something for another program. But we're going to take a short break now. And uh, you can uh, take a look at some of the things we're doing. And in a few minutes, we'll come back with uh, Aaron Hart. <laughs> 